Hello, my name is Nathaniel Morris, and I'm presenting today our work on the performance modeling for short-term cash allocation. Hyperscalers such as cloud providers strive to fully utilize their hardware. Naturally, many of their workloads are co-located on the same hardware to minimize cost but maximize performance. It is common these workloads are associated with service level objectives to guarantee a level of quality for their clients. As the load increases in these systems, SLO violations are more probable as the majority of the resources are allocated to current requests. A company wants to mitigate as many SLO violations as possible because too many will have a negative impact on their finances. For example, Microsoft Bing's revenue would decrease by $316 million if it answered search queries 500 milliseconds slower. This shows how important tail response times of request are to cloud providers. Workloads pinned to separate cores also have L1 and L2 caches separate from co-located workloads executing on the processor. So cache contentions does not occur in the L1 and L2 caches. However, the last level cache is shared across all of the cores, so careful placement of workloads and the management of cache are necessary to avoid performance degradation. For example, the performance of co-located workloads is mostly unaffected if their working sets fit into the last level cache as seen in the right top diagram. The bottom right diagram shows a scenario for severe cache contention because too many workloads are co-located, causing these working sets to not fully fit in the last level cache. Severe cache contention degrades performance because frequently used data by one workload is evicted from cache by a co-located workload. This increases conflict misses in cache and results in lower instructions per cycle. By default, the last level cache on a processor is managed by hardware replacement policies. These policies dictate which data will reside in cache for each workload. Other cache management techniques such as static cache partitioning improves security, eliminates noisy neighbors, but sacrifices some performance since portions of the cache is made exclusive to different workloads. Over the years, the size of cache is increasing relative to the processor. There is an opportunity to manage these larger caches dynamically with software-driven approaches. Intel's cache allocation technology, CAT, offers a software mechanism to manage cache so that context-aware cache allocation policies are possible. Such policies can reduce cache contention and improve performance. CAT provides software control over the cache lines used by a given workload. A class of service is a resource group defined by a capacity bit mask that restricts cache usage to a contiguous set of cache lines. A workload is then assigned to at most one class of service as seen in the figure below. Furthermore, multiple workloads can be assigned to a class of service to share the same set of cache lines. In this work, we make the following contributions. We use short-term cache allocation to speed up query execution by providing access to shared cache lines. Then we describe our modeling approach that predicts response time for workload co-location and cache allocation policies. We use deep and representational learning to characterize the relationship between cache usage counters and response time. Finally, we show our model predicts response time well. Also, our model helps find good cache allocation policies and key factors affecting performance. As mentioned earlier, online services are increasingly using SLOs to drive resource management. Last level cache is an important resource that when used effectively, it can improve response time by reducing the number of main memory lookups. Our work studies short-term cache allocation for online services. 
short-term cash allocation grants queries temporary access to additional shared cash lines for speed up. But how should we set short-term allocation policy for a workload? DCAT is a prior work that allocates, allocates additional shared cash lines to a workload that achieves the greatest speed up via, via throughput profiling, but the amount of cash does not change for the other co-located workloads. DynaSprint allocates additional shared cash lines for the maximum performance. However, the policies found under low arrival rate are reused under high arrival rate, ignoring the effects of queuing delay. We have two goals for cash allocation. First, we want to ensure the baseline performance of a query is unaffected by the allocation policies. And second, slow queries should receive short-term cash allocation to speed up their executions. We considered a system that reserves two cores and two megabytes of private cash for each co-located workload. When short-term cache allocation is invoked, a workload receives two megabytes of additional cash that is shared with the neighboring workload. For example, workload one and workload two share the two megabytes of cash in between them as seen in the diagram. These cache lines are highlighted in green. Variants of the system increase the amount of shared or private cash made available to the workloads. Broadly speaking, the runtime conditions and short-term allocation policy are inputs to the performance model described in the following slides. Runtime conditions are static parameters we control. Co-location policy, query arrival rate, and co-locate workloads are all runtime conditions. A co-location policy assigns workloads to the proper class of service, or generically a cache group and pins them to the specified processor cores. Query arrival rate defines the inter-arrival time in between query requests relative to the expected service time. This parameter controls the load on a system. Co-locate workloads define the type of workloads that will share cache lines during a short-term allocation. A short-term allocation policy specifies a pair of allocation settings the first allocation setting defines the cache lines used for private cache, and the second defines the cache lines used for private plus shared cache. The allocation settings change to private plus shared cache when the response time exceeds a timeout T, otherwise only private cache is used. This work describes a model that predicts response time for short-term cache allocation. Response time is predicted as a function of the co-location policy and runtime conditions. Our approach is composed of cache profiling, representational and deep learning, and first principles modeling. Profiling captures the relationship between cache usage and response time. Next, the representational deep learning algorithm trains on the profile data so that the intermediate metric effective cache allocation can be learned. Finally, response time is computed using the effective cache allocation, runtime conditions, and allocation policy in the first principles queuing model. A wide range of input settings must be profiled to build an accurate model. Uniform random sampling without replacement is time intensive and usually over sample settings. We use a stratified sampling technique to cluster input settings according to effective cache allocation so that random sampling occurs around the various clusters equally. Our profiling goal is to record cache behavior given static and dynamic runtime conditions. We accomplish this by sampling 29 architectural performance counters such as L1 instruction cache stores and last level cache misses throughout the execution. Profiling reveals cache contention caused by spikes in last level cache misses for, co for co-located settings. But how should we quantify cache contention in order to predict response time? We define 
a new metric called effective cash allocation that expresses cash contention as the ratio of speed up from a short term cash allocation policy and increase resource allocation during short term cash allocation. So this metric expresses speed up relative to the baseline performance according to the amount of cash allocated, the frequency of the short term allocation request, and the cash contention from co-located executions. Our profiling approach yields future rich matrices of co-located workloads. The effects of short term allocation and cash contention are represented but hidden within the profiles. We use representational and deep learning techniques to enhance multi-dimensional data by adding features that capture non-linear patterns in the data. The top right figure contains a matrix of profile data that structures highly correlated cache usage counters near one another across the rows in a column. The cache usage containers are averages computed from the profile of a query execution. Each column is a subsequent query that arrived into the system and was profiled. A total of 20 queries were executed for each profiling experiment to reach queuing delays similar to the steady states. This number was experimentally determined. Representational learning is implemented using convolutions and in this context a convolution selects features from a sliding window and predicts a value related to effective cache allocation with a random forest. The above, the above example produces 400 new representational features using a 5x5 window with a step size of 1. These new features are core correlated events that impact effective cache allocation such as a level 1 cache miss with a last level cache access. Instead of just using 580 features to predict effective cache allocation, we now have a total of 980 features. It is important differently sized windows are used to glean patterns only discoverable at different scales. Deep Force is used to implement deep learning on top of a cascade of random forest. Deep Force contains multiple layers of random forces cascaded by the representations found in the sliding window process. A random forest contains hundreds of trees. The cascades learn representations at different levels of, of abstractions, which allow a model to map the features to effective allocation. Each cascade is an ensemble of random forests that specializes in identifying concepts that act as additional information for the next ensemble of random forests. Concepts combine input data that seem far away in the initial feature space but still correlated with effective cache allocation. Using concepts as features, the deep learning approach can avoid overfitting and improve accuracy. The bottom right figure shows a deep forest that uses two cascades per layer, and each layer contains four random forests. The first cascade in layer one combines representational features generated by the 10x10 sliding window with the original set of features. The random forces produce four new concepts that is added to the second cascade using representational features generated by the 5x5 sliding window along with the original set of features. The whole first layer is then cascaded into the next layer of the deep forest. Every new concept is concatenated and passed to subsequent layers. The final result is an accurate prediction of the effective cache allocation. The first principles queuing simulator enables the modeling of distributions for queuing delay and response time affected by short term allocation. This simulator accepts the runtime condition, the cache allocation policy, queuing delay, and the effective cache allocation as input and generates a simulation trace that is the processing rate, short-term allocation processing rate, and arrival time. Such a structure is depicted in the figure. 
Slow queries are targeted by tracking their waiting time in the system. If the total time in the system plus any processing time exceeds the timeout defined by the allocation policy, the remaining execution is sped up using the short-term allocation processing rate. The simulator computes the response time after a predetermined number of queries complete. The instantaneous queue and delay is outputted as a dynamic condition used for future simulations. Simulation is slower than closed form queuing models, but such models are hard to derive when the service rate depends on queue and delay. This relationship violates the assumption these variables are independent. We evaluated our model on eight diverse workloads composed of Spark, Rodinia, and microservices benchmarks. Furthermore, we tested our model out on a wide range of short-term cache allocation policies. Also, we tested architectural features such as various last level cache sizes and the number of cores assigned per workload. Finally, different co-location policies were explored. Our methodology predicts response time given the co-location policy, arrival rate, and short-term allocation policy. The error is computed as the percent difference between the predicted response time and observed response time. We established three evaluation goals. The first is to compare how well our, our modeling approach generalizes. For example, do certain co-location pairs affect accuracy more than others? What about different workloads? Second, how well does the model scale with cache size, the number of cores, and the number of co-locations? Third, compare the performance improvements with alternative modeling approaches. This is a table with a quick description of each workload. The left figure shows the median error for specific workload co-locations. As a side note, the notation Jacobi with parenthesis around BFS means the response time was observed for Jacobi given BFS can access the same shared cache. The results show that median error varies significantly depending on which workload is observed. For example, Jacobi with respect to BFS yields 11% error. Meanwhile, BFS with respect to Jacobi yields 16% error. The right figure examines the prediction error for different sizes of last level cache and the amount of private cache per workload as depicted by the black bars. The striped bars are the number of co-locate workloads running across processor cache sizes. Our approach sees no more than a 2% increase to, to error with increasing the amount of cache per core and total cache available. Furthermore, the number of co-located workloads had little impact on error. Overall, error stayed under 16% across workload co-locations and architectural features. We evaluate our performance model against several competing allocation approaches. The default approach allows each workload access to only its private cache. Simple machine learning models use random force without any deep or representational features. Static allocation gives workloads full access to shared cache lines or only private cache depending on which setting yields the best performance. DCAT allocates shared cache to the workload that achieves the greatest speed up. And lastly, DynaSprint uses timeout to allocate shared cache for maximum performance, just like our approach, but this method ignores queue and delay. That is a high arrival rates when searching for the best policy. The next two figures on top illustrate speed up for two different workload co-locations. The speed ups are relative to the default setting for which each workload has access to only its private cache. Some approaches find better policies for an additional workload, but our approach finds better policies for overall performance. The overall performance is depicted by white bars. For example, DynaSprint improves the performance of Spark K-Means the most, however short term 
that is our approach improves the overall performance for both Spark K-Means and Spark Stream more so than DinoSprint. One insight drawn from these results is that simple models can find short-term allocation policies that rivals the speedup produced by the state-of-the-art approaches. Simple models have larger absolute prediction error, but surprisingly do well selecting short-term allocation policies. The bottom center figure is the CDF showing the speedup of all workloads compared to DCAT. For most of the workloads, simple machine learning models can exceed DCAT and match DynaSprint. Our approach outperforms DCAT in most scenarios and achieves greater speedups. Our approach achieves 1.2x to 2.3x speedup relative to the baseline. In conclusion, short-term cache allocation grants and then revokes access to processor cache lines dynamically. Workloads co-located by shared cache causes recurring slowdowns that degrade performance. Our approach uses representational and deep learning to extract subtle relationships between application level metrics and microarchitectural metrics. Because of our low profiling times, our model can directly manage short-term allocation. We showed our approach predicts response time with less than 16% error and speeds up co-located workloads by 1.2x to 2.3x. Thank you for your time. That concludes my presentation on performance modeling for short-term cache allocation.